Hello and welcome back to Greater Somerville. I'm Joe Lynch. Today is September 13th, 2016. I'm back and you, dear viewer, are my guest tonight. I first want to thank those of you who have complimented me and SCAT TV for our primary election and candidate coverage over the summer. Our election debate hosted by our friends at Cambridge Community Television was well received by the viewers in four cities and towns in our vicinity and it was my pleasure to host and produce and moderate those political shows. Many thanks to the candidates who appeared and congratulations to incumbent State Senator Pat Jalen and newcomer Mike Conley, the incoming state rep for parts of Somerville on their primary election wins. Tonight, I'll be changing up Greater Somerville's format a bit. As you can tell by the set, I have no studio guest. My guest for this show will be you, my viewer. In the future, I plan to use my half hour to talk about the issues you face. There are plenty of shows here at SCAT TV about the arts, special interest groups, the Green Line, sports, and yeah, politics. I plan to open up our phone lines and try to bring you some perspective about the more mundane topics about life here in Somerville, like how much it costs to live here and some of the factors that are contributing to that high cost. Tonight's topic, as some of you may have already seen on other media sites and on Facebook, is the, and these are my words, illegal imposition of a new fee levied on residents, businesses, and other property owners here in Somerville by Mayor Joe Curtitoni. So let me just give you the new cliff, the cliff notes on how the water and sewer increase came about. In the meantime, get your dialing digits ready because this show will be about you and how you feel about paying extra on your water bills. And remember, whether you own rent or lease, this new fee is going to find your wallet. So let me give you a few things. I'm going to explain a few things that I know about it. There are more people in this city who are experts on what's happened with the water and sewer bills that recently came out to you. So hopefully they're going to call in. Hopefully they're going to correct me if I say something incorrect here. So I'll give you a couple of minutes. You know, I'm just going to try to explain what's happening and then I'll open up the phone lines to take your calls. So the number should be at the bottom of the screen. I can see it, hopefully you can too. It's 617-628-9876. So as many of you know, uh, businesses and homeowners alike, property owners alike, started to receive the water and sewer bills back in July. Um, I am a rate payer, water and sewer rate payer for two different properties and much to my surprise when I opened up the first one there was a new fee in there called a connection charge for both properties that I have uh, control over. It was a $60 per billing cycle. So here in Somerville we get a water and sewer bill three times a year. So in effect, it's every four months they bill us for our water and sewer usage. Up until this year, we would only get billed for our water consumption and the sewer charge related to that water consumption. So quite frankly, for people like me who love my little garden and water during a drought summer, I get no break because I water my garden and that water does not go into the sewer system. That's something the city has talked about, but there's something the city just doesn't think that they can do. So lo and behold, the $60 fee charge, tax, whatever you want to call it, appeared on the bill, and I questioned it. Like many of you, I called my alderman. He knew nothing. I called three other aldermen. They knew nothing. So here's the conundrum. The fee is now set in place. The Board of Aldermen are all upset because the mayor and his staff never revealed during the course of the budget that there would be a new fee levied on all property owners. Let me make the point one more time. It's not just the property owners in this city who are going to feel the effect of this. Renters, businesses that lease, and anybody, who's, anybody who touches water, you're going to feel this. So the question came about was, why didn't the Board of Aldermen 11 very smart people in this city. Why didn't they know this fee was coming? As we reported on SNN uh, uh, two episodes ago, 
Mark Lawhorn, who is the Water and Sewer Commissioner, um, these are my words again, was basically told, fall on the sword, kiddo. You know, it's your department. The city was not, uh, the, the residents and the businesses and the property owners were not properly notified. You know, it's, um, it, it's something that I would say is that the Board of Aldermen in this city, whether you like them or you, la uh, or you hate them, you know, they have a duty and a responsibility as our elected officials to get along with the mayor, and the mayor also has that reciprocity. He should be getting along with them. The mayor knew this fee was coming, yet re did not reveal it to the Board of Aldermen. Quite frankly, if I was an alderman, I would be bull. Many of them were. Many of them got hundreds of phone calls from their constituents saying, what is this new fee? So, the DPW commissioner, along with the water and sewer uh, manager, commissioner, director, sets the rates for the water and sewer for the city of Somerville. The city ordinance calls for a public hearing in sufficient time, it's mandated in the city ordinances, by a certain date you must have a public hearing and allow the public to weigh in on what you propose to do. Now obviously, this wouldn't be a big deal if they hadn't touched anything on the water and sewer. The city of Medford said, we're not touching anything, we're going to keep it the same way we did last year. The city of Somerville decided we have to adjust. There was a big meeting, it came about that you know, our system, our system, water and sewer system, is just like anybody else, you know, in inner cities, older inner cities. It needs maintenance, it needs replacement. We all get that. Nobody disputes it. N nobody says, you know, we're, we're, we're a brand new 21st century city. We're an old city. We need maintenance, and we need money to do that maintenance. So without me going on and on about what, how I feel about this, which is not terrific, I don't think the city needed to do a sleight of hand when it came to the fee. If we, it was explained to us, you know, as, as I've said to, you know, many elected officials, look, at, I, I don't care how you explain this to other people, but talk to me like I'm a five-year-old. Just explain things to me and I won't get upset. When you try to do things in a sneaky manner and you try to hoodwink and you try to put it over on the rate payers or the taxpayers or the property owners or the voters, that's when we get mad. I know there are hundreds of people, probably thousands of people in this city who are bull right now about the way that this was handled. So the rate was set back in May. They did not have the required public hearing. And lo and behold, in June, off they went to the races. So for a single family, which I own here in the city, I get a $60 flat charge that could increase next year. They could decide to increase that rate. And that's based on the size of the water pipe, the distribution system that comes into my house. Now, most single families or two families or maybe even three families have the smaller pipe. So everybody gets a $60 charge. Larger businesses or larger residential complexes, like some of the big apartment complexes, they all get a much larger charge. And lo, lo and behold, some of the businesses here in the city that have sprinkler systems, they have the larger pipes, the largest pipes of all, they got walloped with a new connection fee. So I went on to Facebook, you know, specifically to advertise that I was coming on to talk about this tonight. So I don't want to, I don't want to take up a whole lot of time, but the, you know, the question comes into the city has a responsibility to us to keep our water and sewer systems clean, healthy, and safe. We get it. The city also has a responsibility to its residents and its businesses to inform us about when you're going to hike fees, when you're going to hike taxes. You know, I, I guess the reason I wanted to do this show specifically about this is this reason. When your bank institutes a new fee, they have to give you notice in advance. When Comcast wants to increase your cable fees, they have to give you notice in advance. When any utility, Eversource, NSTAR, uh, you name it, when any of Verizon, when any of them are going to increase your fees, they have to give you sufficient notice. That's mandated. That is the law. In the city of Somerville, we have the same law on, a book, on the books about water and sewer fees. They have the right to set the rates. They have the right to institute charges. But they have to follow the law and the ordinances. That was not done in this case. Why now? Who knows? Who knows? Look around you. You know, I travel this city every single day, 
and I see the massive redevelopment that's taking place. And it's interesting to me, now somebody can correct me, it's interesting to me that most of the water and sewer replacement projects are going on in the big redevelopment areas. Union Square, some down around Interbelt, Assembly Square. Look, so who should be paying for this upgrade of our system? Is it us who live in, in the city centers in the dense residential neighborhoods? Or is it the new businesses that are coming in, that are putting more stress on our system? I, that's a question you, you can answer because you're gonna be my guest if you call in a little bit. So does the question, that, one of the questions that was asked is, does the Board of Aldermen need to approve this? The answer is no. Years ago, don't quote me, many years ago, the Board of Aldermen gave up that authority and they gave up that responsibility of setting the water and sewer rates. They gave it over to the DPW. Thereby, it is the mayor that basically approves, disapproves, or the mayor has the authority to disintegrate and rescind that fee. And that's what this program really should be all about, is if the city did not follow protocol, they did not meet the required ordinance, should the mayor rescind that fee? My answer is yes. So, you know, the city solicitor was asked by many of the aldermen and basically said, um, you, you know, we think this fee is illegal. This is what the Board of Aldermen was saying, many of them. We think this fee is illegal and we want you to take a look at it. And whether or not the, the city followed its own ordinance and its own laws when they instituted this fee without notice to the public. The city solicitor responded, um, let me just say this nicely, I know the city solicitor, he's a nice guy, he works hard, but this is the biggest piece of doo-doo that I have seen in a long time come out of the city solicitor's office. He basically says, as a public hearing was held, there was a public hearing held, but it was not held in time, and rates were set prior to the beginning of fiscal year 17. The purpose of the ordinance was effectuated. It's legal speak. He's saying that they abided by the law. Therefore, the city's public officers abided by the essence of the ordinance. The essence of the ordinance I didn't know it had a smell to it. It is either right or it's wrong. Then he cites a court case. And here's where the, here's where the nutty part of this comes in. The word shall, as used in statutes, although in its common meaning is mandatory, is not of inflexible significance and not infrequently is construed as permissive or direct so as to effectuate a legislative purpose. Somebody's got to call in tonight and let me know what the hell that means. What it basically means is the city solicitor dug deep enough to try to find a court case where the word shall didn't necessarily mean that you had to do it. He goes on to say, in my opinion, for the reasons cited above, the language of the above referenced ordinances setting dates by which public meetings must be held and rates must be set by public officials is directory, not mandatory. And thus, failure to adhere strictly to these deadlines does not invalidate the rates. Okay, so Mr. City Solicitor, when you come around and you fine me for having overgrowth uh, vegetation in my fence, is that the ordinance directory or mandatory? When you ticket me at a parking meter, is that ordinance directory or mandatory? And when you tell me, City of Somerville, that I gotta pay my taxes, is that directory or mandatory? You see why I'm being sarcastic in this? This was, in effect, I think the city got caught with their pants down. And they're basically trying to play uh, catch up. So my, my quest tonight is to see if any of you have already received your bill. I know I read on Facebook there was one um, church here in Somerville that because they had installed a sprinkler system now, you have to figure it's not a massive church like, you know, one of the big 
Congregationals or Roman Catholics. This is a storefront church in East Somerville who rehabilitated their place. They are great city partners. They went ahead and put sprinkler system in because they are now a public gathering place. And quite frankly, you know, they do a great service by being here in our community, but they got walloped because that sprinkler system was on the much larger pipe that was coming into their system. They had to upgrade that, and I'm sure they paid for it themselves. They got what their bill is now 500, almost $600 more. Is it fair? No, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair at all. You know, the city of Somerville under Joe Curtitoni has been watching what the other utilities are doing. And they're getting away with, you know, levying fees and fines and taxes. And, you know, at some point, people have to fight back. And people have to say, enough is enough. You know, if we have an old system, we understand it. We want you to keep it in good working order, too. But we want to know where this money is going to go. If it's not going to my neighborhood, hell, I'm not here to support the new multi-billion multi dollar um, developments that are coming into Union. I know we're all supposed to be share and share alike and all, you know, all boats lift with the rising tide, but come on guys, you know, to, to somebody who's retired, 180 bucks a year could mean the difference between them giving Christmas gifts to their grandchildren or medications. You know, you, don't, you may not think it's a big deal, you may not think 180 bucks is a big deal. I happen to think it's a big deal when the city does something on the sly, without notice, and then tries to bully the Board of Aldermen by saying, that's tough. I'm the mayor. I'm going to do it. Take me to court if you don't think I have the legal perspective to do this. That's my rant about the new water and sewer charges. So I'm going to leave it up to you. Give me a call if you want. Make any kind of comment you want. I just ask you because we are in prime time viewing. Um, you can use naughty language if you want, but be careful of the vulgarity. So give me a call, 617-628-9876. The phone lines are open. I'll take them right here. Any comment that you want to make about it, please feel free. So, you know, I guess in the format going forward for Greater Somerville, there are going to be issues that will be raised about this, um, you know, and I fully intend on bringing the man on the street to sit here in this chair with me instead of a phone tonight. All we got is a phone. Hopefully you're going to call. So I know that, uh, you know, it was pretty last minute unannounced in the media that we were going to be changing the format of Greater Somerville. I know I was just on, on air as a co-anchor of Somerville Neighborhood News. And I got to tell you, one of the most delightful guests I've ever had was Hunter. Hunter, I think, is a mix, but he looks like a miniature uh, illusion. And uh, he cooperated during the filming of, of SNN, the, f the segment that you just watched if you were watching television. So give me a call, 617-628-9876, if you are as uh, upset about your new water and sewer bill with a $60 addition minimum. Um, you know, when I talked about the commercial uh, institutions here in the city, the commercial buildings or the much larger apartment buildings, they got a much larger flat service fee. Um, you know, they call it a connection fee. And I guess my question to the city would, and I've asked a couple of aldermen this question, you know, a connection fee is when I make the connection to my water and sewer system. And it's often funny to me that if I call for a new water and sewer uh, connection to the street outside of my house, I have to pay for that. So what is this water connection fee that you're trying to impose on me now? Is that just the mere fact that you send me a bill that I'm connected to the water and sewer system? So you think you have the right to charge me a flat fee? Uh, kind of sounds like a membership fee membership in the Water and Sewer Club of Somerville. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, you might all be watching. Hopefully you're all watching the, the Alderman's meeting, which is going on at the same time that the show is going on. And uh, I happened to catch it just before I came into the studio tonight. And the city solicitor was in front of what looked like to me 11 angry aldermen questioning him about his response to their query on whether or not we could rescind this $60 fee. You know, I give credit to the alderman who spoke up 
loudly and clearly um, and basically said, we think it's illegal what the city has done. You know, when I keep saying the city, the sequence of events are this, that they do this study, the Water and Sewer Commission in the city, or the commissioner, Water and Sewer, will make a recommendation to the DPW commissioner. The DPW commissioner takes that to the mayor. So ultimately, the buck stops with the mayor, not with the Board of Aldermen on this one. So I want you to keep calling your Board of Aldermen. Let them know that you think it's unfair. Call the mayor's office. Let him know you think it's unfair. You know, for an office, uh, don't get me wrong, you've seen Mayor Joe on this show before. You've seen him down here at SCAD TV with us before. We respect a lot of the things he does, but I think sometimes, Mayor, when you get backed into a corner, common sense doesn't reign well with you. I think what, what the intent was good. We have a lot of old, broken, and in need of repair water and sewer system in the city. But you are the one that talks about transparency. You talk about open and free and transparent government. This was about as transparent as a solid oak door. You didn't let the board know. You didn't talk about it during budget season. You didn't let anybody else know. And then when the bills appeared, bingo. Did you think it was going to go away? I think you played this badly, Mayor. So I would ask, you know, hopefully you are all watching. Either that or the phone's not hooked up tonight. So um, I, I think what should happen is, you know, watch the rerun of the Board of Aldermen meeting. It's ongoing now. Don't switch off Channel 3. Go, go to them at 8 o'clock. Um, watch the Board of Aldermen replay and see how your alderman is sticking up for your rights as a rate payer here in the city. Let me repeat it for the third time. If you're a renter, if you're a business lease owner, if you're only here for a short time or a long time, guess what? You're going to feel the effects of this because a property owner is going to pass this fee right down to the tenants. So whether you're a business, a business tenant or a residential tenant, you're going to feel this. So let me do it one more time, 617-628-9876. Um, obviously, everybody must be happy with their water and sewer bills because nobody wants to talk about them. But uh, you know, I think, uh, I think the transparency issue is front and center. You know, if you're not going to do anything, if you didn't do anything wrong, wh why try to hide what you're going to do? So if you thought that you had legitimate reasons to levy a new water and sewer fee. One of the other things they did do was, um, and this was brought to my attention by somebody in my neighborhood, is if you look at your water bill very, very carefully, it's done in metrics, you know, so that graph on the side, it says you've used between one and 1,500 cubic whatever, don't look at me, I don't know what the hell, but I know how to read it. What they did was adjusted the chart this time out. So it's no longer 1 to 1,500, it's 1 to 1,200, or 1 to 10, 10, uh, 1 to 1,000. Yet, that, what that effectively does is, the only analogy I can give you is, remember when a five pound bag of sugar was five pounds, and then slowly but surely they shrunk it to four pounds and something, but you were paying the same price? This is what they did on the water, bill, water and sewer bills as well. So three things affected your water and sewer bill. First, they lowered the consumption thresholds. They did not touch the water rate. They did increase the sewer rate, and they levied a new flat tax on your water and sewer bill. So when you look at that, no matter what you do in terms of consumption, if you only flush the toilet once a day, if you only run the laundry once a week, if you only take a shower once a month, you're not going to get rid of that $60 fee. It's still going to be 60 bucks. So, you know, when I looked at one of the other water bills that I paid recently, um, it actually belonged, the property that I administered belonged to my late sister. There is nobody in one of the units. The hot water heater is the only thing that's being used for one of the units. And when I looked at what had taken place on that water bill, the water usage was $30. The sewer fee was $60. And the new levied charge was 60 bucks. 
you tell me whether or not we should be upset. So, you know, when the mayor talks about conservation, the mayor talks about greening of Somerville, you know, I have a, I have a feeling that next year when springtime rolls around, I'm not going to be as amenable to keeping my property as green as it has I've tried to this year because I get no break on watering my, watering my lawn, watering my garden. Um, so you know what? I might just pave over the side yard into a driveway. I know there's a lot of people who want to talk about depaving Somerville, but in the end, it doesn't help. Not if you're going to keep levying charges and fees, um, you know, every time we turn around. So I'm almost at the end of my little diatribe here about water and sewer charges, new water and sewer charges. Um, I would hope that I've contributed a little bit of something to uh, life here in Somerville as we know it. You know, it's, uh, it's funny. I follow politics. I think most of you who watch this show understand that, you know, I kind of live, breathe, and eat politics here in the city. And it always amazes me when, you know, um, the executive branch, meaning the mayor, um, tries to pull a fast one on the alderman. Because uh, I listen to Mayor Joe a lot, and I listen to the alderman, and, you know, they both sides talk about transparency. Uh, they talk about, you know, how, they, how well they get along on certain issues. It just boggles my mind that, that the, the mayor's office and, and whoever came up with this cockamamie scheme of, you know, let's put the fee in and see if anybody notices, notices it. Well, Mayor Joe, guess what? We noticed. Um, I think it's illegal what you did. I think you should rescind it, and I think you should start all over again. But maybe you don't want to do that because you'd have to wait until next year. And it's election year here in the city of Somerville. So if you want to find your candidate for alderman, alderman at large and mayor, find out what they say about the new $60 charge and whether or not they're going to keep pushing to rescind that. As always, everybody, thanks for watching. Stay safe and stay informed. See you next time. Thank you.